Hey, hey. everyone. Hey. Hey, hey. Hi. Hi, Hi Kelly. Hi, Happy new week. Happy new Monday. Um, I love Mondays when our new episodes come out. I love it. So fun. Um, so welcome back for an all new episode. Hey, I'm Amanda Davison. With us is the one and only newly voted in school board member, Kelly Brinkman. She is an author. She's a, an interactive potter and speaker. She is amazing. She's an artist. I mean, I don't know where do we be, where do we even stop. I don't know. We could go on. She's an amazing mom, <laughs> wife. Anyway, um, you know her. You love her. She's been with us all year, and we um, adore you, Kelly. So, and this um, is Amanda. She's an amazing cook. Ask her for recipes. She uses them. Bless. Good for you. <laughs> and a great, a fantastic wife of a farmer who's oh. like in the field literally half the year, and. <laughs> seems to juggle all the balls. Good job. You know, I don't know. I don't And is a teacher, a counselor, this is why we're friends cuz I need professional help. Right. We're friends cuz you're amazing. Listen, like we love you and we're so glad you're here. And we wish we could like bring you we should bring people on and just like tell them the amazing things about them, you know. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm still looking for that direct flight to Fergus Falls, Minnesota, but me too. Come. Me too. I'm still looking for it too. I do have, you know, you can come up and you can fly into Fargo anytime. I have a friend from Texas coming up this summer. Shout out to Melissa. She's going to come up, bring her kids up, hang out at the lake with us. So I'm telling you, you know, what would be really fun. We should have like a, like a conference sometime, like to just like bring all the friends in. We should totally do that anyway. Okay, welcome back to... <laughs> right. Anywho. <laughs> that was a take a vacation moment. But sometimes those events or visits are something to look forward to. So I, know. For I love me. that. It's good to put those on the calendar. I know, especially like you say, because my husband is gone a lot. And it really does give me something to look forward to. Like our summer the, when we got together. Was that last summer? Or two summers ago? You were super fun. tolerant. I took you through a sculpture park in Minneapolis. I was like, do you want to go? You're like, I didn't even know there was a sculpture park. I was like, well, let's go. Kelly's like, I'm, we're going to have to, you know, hit up like an art something. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever that means. Let's do it. I am in for right. that. And it was so fun. And we like took pictures on all the things I feel like, but it was so awesome. Right. Yeah. So this is going to be a great episode, you guys. We're really <laughs> excited. Um, this, we're talking about a post by Jess Robichon. If you don't know her yet, she and her husband lead Radiant Marriage, and she's a counselor. And I love her wisdom in this post. And I think there's so much that we can gain from it because things can be really hard sometimes. And these are three questions we can ask to really help gain perspective. I mean, yep. who doesn't need that? Right. I loved this. Um, as I read it and kind of prepared for us meeting together, when she just digs right in and says, there is a season for everything. And I think sometimes as wives to feel like you have to do it all, whatever that is, that may be different for you, but you have to do it all and do it all now. And I think that's a misnomer. You know, that's, that's not true. And to know that like right now can be a season like Jess is having of sowing and preparation. Sometimes you get a season of reaping, right? And those are not always like, our seasons are not always sequential. Yeah. And you can have a pocket of one season and then be reaping in another area of your life. And there's so much benefit to understanding what season we're in, right? Um, which is what she kind of, you know, goes into as is one of the, and maybe I'm just jumping in too fast, but I just love how she first asks or challenges us to ask to us to consider what type of season am I in? She says, take some right. time to reflect and identify the type of season you're in. I just grabbed this book. It was right next to me. I love this book, The Four Seasons of Marriage by J Gary Chapman. And we'll link it in the show notes. But he just, 
um, summarizes the different seasons. So when I, you know, when he explains these, I'll just read them. You can kind of think about, well, what season am I in? Um, so sometimes we find ourselves in winter, distant, discouraged, and dissatisfied. Other times we experience springtime filled with hope, openness, and anticipation. Sometimes we bask in the warmth of summer, satisfied, comfortable, simply enjoying life. In times of the fall, negligence and uncertainty creep in, leaving us feeling unsettled and apprehensive. Hmm. You know, I think that's helpful, whether it's in our marriage, whether it's in our you know, circumstances. Um, I love that visual of like thinking, well, is it easier right now? Am I just kind of, are things, you know, falling together? Am I just like, is it a kind of a simple, um, uh, uncomplicated time of my life or is it, you know, in this season I'm in and, or is it right. really like, am I like contending for things I don't see right now? And it feels like I might not see, you know, Mm-hmm. Why am I, you know, does everything seem hard? Um, yeah, it's just, it's just good to like, I don't know. I love his, I love his descriptions of that. Yeah. And even as Jess has said, to identify the type of season, but she said really to dig in and to pause. And so much in our culture, that's not something that's rewarded or encouraged, right? In American culture, it's a lot of go, go, go. I know that we have wives all around the world listening. And perhaps you can, you see that. Sometimes it can just be this pressure to feel like keep going, keep going, keep going. But one of your posts that you shared on A Wife Like Me recently was like, sometimes our speed of life is a substitute for actually stopping and thinking through things more deeply. You, of course, said it way more articulate, but that's what I got out of it. And I thought, am I building in times of rest throughout the day and reflection so that I can identify where I'm at and how God's working? I mean, do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't know if anyone has read this book. We'll link this one as well. It's um, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer phenomenal book. And, um, I, I read it and then I've been watching some of the podcasts on the, um, like interviews with him and it's so good because for us to understand, yeah, the, the pace of which culture in the world pulls us in, um, keeps us from even, you know, even just simply recognizing where we're at, like even just this question in and of itself, you're like, you might even be like, I don't even know because I'm so hurried. I'm so busy. I'm, and right. that busyness is really, you know, what, what is that quote? The enemy doesn't have to lie to you if he can just distract you. Right. Um, like what's the, like, he, like if you just are so busy that you're not even tuning into the, God's pace and rhythm and plan and vision yeah. um, and and hope for your life. I mean, what are you even doing? And so it's just this, um, yeah, I to so my point is I so agree with that, what you just said. And um, it's easier for us and so many, I hear so many of us, and I've experienced in different seasons of my life too, where we actually do when we actually do slow down, we're uncomfortable because we, we we're running at such a pace that to slow makes us uncomfortable because mm-hmm. we're so used to being busy and hurried and our phones are always on and there's some sort of device always on. And so we have no idea what peace even feels like so that when we do feel it, when we do slow enough, we can't even sink into it because mm-hmm. we're so tuned to this fast paced rhythm, distraction, busyness, hurried hearts. Um, right. Yeah. So yes, I to say all that to say, yes, I agree. <laughs> and she continues to unfold that. She's like, when we can feel that um, slowing down, we might ask her point number two, what might God be trying to teach me in this season mm-hmm. versus I've been through some tough seasons 
And I really just would prefer to get my head down and just plow on through and let's get past this. But instead, if I ask God, what are you trying to teach me in this? And furthermore, help me learn it the first time. So I don't need to keep repeating it. Right. That's something that I've learned by asking, what are you trying to teach me in this season? But that's not like something any of us have mastered, you know, that's a part of the human experience. And to continue to ask that we can get caught up in the, let's get past it and forget to ask, Oh, hold up. God's way is different. What are you trying to show me? Yeah. I think there's, um, there are so, if there's anything I'm learning as I'm getting older, it's just like the realization that there is just so much that we can't control. My husband, um, you know, he farms like we just were talking about. And so like, I think there's this percentage that, that farmers know, and I'm going to botch it, but it's like 80 some percent of what farmers do is actually uncontrollable. Like over 80% of it, you can't control. So you can actually control like 12% of farming, um, you know, other, the, the rest of it is out of your control. And I kind of feel like that's life. Like we cannot, we have no control over how that other person's going to respond. We have no control mm-hmm. over whether or not our husbands are going to X, Y, Z. We have no control um, or little, little control over like how our kids are going to grow up and blah, 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 blah. Like, um, or the choices that they're going to, right? Like we have right. little control over the fact that um, our finances are hard and, you know, I'm still w- waiting for that job and our, you know, um, whatever, right? And so the, the I, this question is so important because, Lord, right. what do you want to do in me in this and in through this, during this? And yeah, it's so tempting to be like, I just want to get to the other side. I do think there's beauty in, in asking the Lord to show us vision for what's beyond this mm-hmm. in the season we're in, like in this difficult mess that feels so is so hard. God, give me vision to see beyond like what you have beyond this and show me what you want to teach me in this. Um, right. I'm be humble enough to ask it. And to lean in and listen and then respond in that and like allow you to prune me and, um, you know, peel back more of you and and the yuck in me in this. And I think that's just such an important question because we can't control so much of everything of life, you know? Right. And I also know that as Mr. Chapman was speaking in the book that you shared with us, there is hope in knowing that the season we're in right now is not an always. Yes. And there is one to come and we're familiar with the four seasons and knowing that those always change. If you live in the area, you know, on the globe, that seasons actually change. Bless you. Those who, Natalia, if you live in Florida. Okay. So there's four seasons, right? Yeah. (laughs) It's a... Well, for Amanda, it's first winter, and then it's second winter, and then it's summer, and then preparation for winter, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so sad. Actually, that is one thing I do love about where we live, is that, yeah. uh, you know, we have a saying, like, even now, you guys, seriously, it is April. We're recording this. It is April 13th. I had to look. Okay, you guys, it is April 13th here. Okay. We have another snowstorm coming tonight. Okay. Right. Okay. That is not okay. Okay. But it is so true. But here's the, like the saying we have is spring always comes. Spring always comes. It does always come. And right. so like, even though another storm is coming this week, spring is coming. It right. is going to come in Jesus name. It is going to come. <laughs> but like, right. it, it is cool because as long and as brutal as the winters are and can be, right. spring is going to come. And right. sometimes, you know, like some of our wives, you know, what's so hard and beautiful is that women share so many different things with us. One is, you know, we just had a post come out this last week on um, um, allowing our husbands, like 
like re- allowing them to kind of lead, rely on them more, right? Like to be able to like kind of release control and actually let them take over on some things, right? Because it's really hard for us to do sometimes. And I had, we had some cool messages, some hard messages from wives saying like, I wish I could do that. My husband is in a wheelchair. My husband is disabled. He's mentally ill. He's whatever, right? And I can't. Sounds nice, but I can't. And that mm. is potentially like some of our reality, like for some of us right. wives. And um, we have one contributor, Karen Smith, whose husband is wheelchair bound. And she shares a lot on the topic of like what it looks like to be a wife with a husband who's disabled, right? And um, for, for many of us, the springtime season might not come here on this side of heaven. Hmm. And, and I, you know, I, I've heard this saying, I've never forgotten it of how God always heals. He always heals. Right. Um, he heals immediately. He can heal immediately. It's just, it just miraculously immediately. He can heal progressively over time or he heals eternally. Mm -hmm. So I just, even if, right. I love how scripture sometimes in different um, passages we see like, and even if he doesn't, you know, so even if the springtime isn't here on this side of heaven, it will be in heaven. Like that is one hope we know we can be look forward to. Right. And it might be here on earth too. We don't know, but we can expectantly like, long for that and ask the Lord, okay, Lord here in it, what are you going to, what are you teaching me? What do you want to do in me and through me? You know? Right. And one of the ways that, um, Jess looks at that, she said, do you see certain patterns emerging? I've always asked, what is my behavior revealing? Like if I just step back from my day a minute and look at some of the choices I've made, why am I making those? And is that a substitute for God's peace instead. Yeah. Also asking, are you encountering issues to work through? You know, is she uses anger, um, rest or always on the go. So are you encountering those things so that you could say, Lord, how are you trying to teach me in this season? Because even asking that broad question, I have to break it down further and to look at how to apply that. Mm. And something that I think is so humbling, she kind of just refers to this in one of the questions she asked too, and like, Lord, what are you trying to show me or teach me? She says, maybe God is wanting us to learn how to depend on him. And and for me, that's a question that I wrestle with or tension that is so like blatantly obvious that Amanda, whoa, how much hope have you put in to that? or that Mm -hmm. person or this whatever job or how much hope did you have in that relationship? How much did you really have in uh, expecting that that trip would happen? Or I don't know, whatever that case is, is like, who it's revealing of my heart that, Oh Lord, my hope is not all in you actually, if I'm honest. And so like that beautiful, invitation to come back and realign and um, who like, or you are God, <laughs> you are my hope. You are my life and my source in the way for me and my heart. Right. Um, and that, that's a beautiful thing we can experience in the midst of all these things. If in, in the midst of that hard season, if we actually slow enough to ask God these things. Yeah. Yeah. She leads us to where or how can I serve God in this season? And that's really a question of getting outside of ourselves and looking to how to connect with others and how to continue to share the Lord, regardless of whatever season we're in. And that's taking the focus off ourselves. I think... It, it, it is. And it's also maybe going to force us to make some changes. Like I think going back to what we were talking about at the beginning of this episode, it's like, if we're so busy and we're, I, I think this is what we have to really begin to grow in and like challenge our, the people we know and love in is if we're in a season, like I see so often that when we are in a season of something, we just continue on as if we're not. 
and we don't mm-hmm. make adjustments for the seasons we're in. Like, um, there was a time, a season for myself when I knew, okay, we had littles at home. I knew the Lord was saying, Amanda, I'm calling you into like full-time ministry as a vocation. I'm calling you to start a ministry, you know, and, and yet I was also working full-time. I was teaching at a college and I was like, right. okay, uh, Lord, I know you're saying this, but my life is actually so busy right now with littles. Like I got a baby right. and, uh, you know, um, like I'm, I'm work. I have to work right now. We, our finances were not, we had, I had no choice. And so it was a season of preparation. Like Jess was kind of mm-hmm. just alluding to in this post. And, and right. I was also, I had somehow, somehow landed on the women's ministry, which I never asked to be on, um, at our church. And yet I was in this elite women's ministry now. And like, um, and I was also on the if gathering committee in our community. And, and I had, I had wanted to be on that. So anyway, like here's all these things I have. And I could have just continued on. I knew though, after much prayer, like the Lord was saying, I'm preparing you for something. And now is not a time to be like giving in all these ways and serving in all these ways. So I, I, I made the difficult decision. I was like literally crying at, at, at a meeting at the if committee. I'm like, I have to step off because the Lord is doing something. And I just, I know I have to do this. I don't want right. to, but I know I have to. And then the same with the women's ministry thing. I'm like, I can't serve in this way anymore. I'm so sorry. I want to, but I, and I just can't right now. I know the Lord's like asking me to like, just clear off everything and just be in this place right now of what he's asking me to like really get clear on and zoom in on and all these things. And anyway, I just think it's important too, that when we ask like, Lord, how are you asking me to serve? It might mean, or it might be that God is saying, I want you to potentially only serve in this way. And which means we're going to need to maybe make some adjustments. Right. It's like, uh, it could be like, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm preparing you for a position of high or something. Therefore you do need to focus on this way of serving or this way of serving and clear right. other things or activities or things we even enjoy doing because I'm preparing you for something. And this is the Avenue, which I want you to focus on serving right now. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I just, I just want to encourage us to that. That might mean it, it doesn't always equate to like, give more, do more. Right give out more input. It might mean like clearing things off so that the, maybe the exactly. one or two input outputs we're giving are the ones he's asking us to do. Right. I think it is that question of better versus best. Mm-hmm. And even looking at the urgent versus the important. So it could feel like all those things on your plate were important, but was the most urgent out of that was your husband, your kids, right? And where the Lord was moving you to act. All those other things then became important, but didn't necessarily have to stay on the plate. You know, that's something that sometimes people will ask me, how do you do it all? I was like, well, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. And it's, it's segmenting time, and it's not actually adding to my plate, but things continue to shift. So right now, my husband is um, running in an election for the August primary, and we have prepared for that by looking at our schedule for the summer, and we put the most um, urgent things, or the important things. I got that out of order, didn't I? I put the most important things up top, And we scheduled those and everything else is falling off so that it is easier for us to just pick up and go to the pool or go to the stream and go play versus we're not putting, you know, soccer and baseball and dance all on the same schedule because it's a busy season for our family. So one of the very first meetings Mark and I had over a date night was like, okay, So how are we going to prepare for that? What else is going to come off of our plate so that we can fully step into this season that God has given us? And I think perhaps it's that message that we get that you have to continue to add, add, add. Mm -hmm. And, you know, or if women come to you and say, how do you do it all? You're like, what part are you talking about? And I'm not doing all that simultaneously. Or people will say, well, how did you, you know, make all this 
pottery and how are you talking with Amanda and how are you serving in this Bible study? Well, I made that pottery like three weeks ago and it's in stages. You and I visit during scheduled times and we share those um, recordings during scheduled times. Bible study is certain times of the week. I kind of prepare for that. So it can even be a comparison thing where sometimes that is a part of the equation. When we're asking ourselves the question, we can't even fully ask ourselves because we're too busy kind of comparing. Or if she's doing this, then therefore I must too. And that's not where God would have us. And that's just the beauty of that individual personal conviction that wherever the Lord leads you, me, right. her, 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 that we're trusting that that's, that's where the Lord leads us. And so when that right. is a no to the, hey, can you help at this, you know, the parent teacher thing, or if it's a no about serving at the church thing or the whatever, the birthday thing or whatever that looks like for each of us, right. that we can trust and honor that in each other. That, hey, I trust that she's just, you know, following whatever the Lord is asking of her in this season. Like, beautiful. And I applaud that. And that might mean that so-and-so has to say no to the things or the, you know, whatever. And that's just, but that's where God has each of us. And that can we, you know, spur each other on to really go hard after that and pursue what he's asking us to do and asking where he's asking us and how he's asking us to serve. Can we applaud that in each other, that that is different? and. Can we also, you know, I, I, I joke or I laugh when people also ask me that question because I'm like, girl, you have no idea. (laughs) Like if you're, you know, like, or, or, you know, different friends in my community know, like I texted you to get my text. I'm like, oh no, I didn't yet because my phone's off or I'm not on Voxer over the weekend typically or whatever. I try not to be, I have different boundaries that like. If once we get done recording, guess what I'm doing? I turn everything off. I'm quiet. I clean. I'm going to make some food. I'm, there's like this, whatever we have. Rhythm. Yes. And the way we serve for each of us is so different and it looks different in different seasons. And can we get really good at, you know, challenging our friends to just only listen to his voice and what he's saying and not give into that pressure of, you know, looking around or I should do that because if I don't, who's going to do it or blah, 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 or if she is, or, you know, whatever. There's such beauty in honoring what he doing and obeying what only he is asking of us in each season that we're in. And, And that again, ebbs and flows, like you said, I love that too. It's just different. Right. Um, Yeah. And it has to be that for sure. Yeah. Uh, She asked us in the wife step, what one thing can you do to get off of autopilot and maybe invite yourself to kind of fan back and see things for what they are. So that's really challenging and it's good to do. You know, I, I have used your materials, the design my day and that is wonderful because it does help me really fan back. And it even kind of says, what's what's going on in this year, wherever you start? And then help to prioritize those in different areas. And that was a really good exercise for me. And that is not something that's like one and done, but it's something I continue to go back to. And that's one way that I kind of, it's a touch base for me to make sure that I'm I'm hitting on some of those things that I feel like the Lord is calling me to do those bigger overarching, um, important things versus urgent. Sorry, I got that mixed up earlier, but yeah, that's what's really important. I'm doing, I I have time set aside next week to do it again for the summer because for me seasonally, again, because my husband's home, then he's not, then he's not whatever. And like, there's different activities for the kids in the summer versus the whatever. Right. So I'm about to do it for summer to start planning And that's such a good point because we have what I find. And the reason why I started doing this for myself is because I, we can find ourselves doing tasks or, or having tasks on our schedule or on our brain or our to-do list that aren't of the Lord. The Lord never asked us to do these things. right? Right. And so here we are doing things that we really are taking up time and energy and whatever from our family. Right. He's asking, actually asking us to do. But I love that we 
have to think through it forces us to think through what are what things right. that we want to do versus the non-negotiables that we need to do for our own soul and then the must do's too so uh, yeah. um, that is available for everyone in the wife like me collective it's always there you can print it off and go through it as often as you need it's also right. just, um, a wife like me.com if you want that um but yeah think through that stop you know moving th- just through autopilot like just says and right. we look at that yeah and I have to add to my schedule on there times to reflect. And that's a weekly thing for me to make sure that I stop and reflect and kind of throw a wrench in the in the wheel that can feel like you're just zipping down the, the highway. Yeah. So thanks for that invitation, Jess. That is a great way to kind of recap and say, how can we get off of autopilot and take more time to reflect? So, so good. Amanda, at the end, you let me ask you any question I want. And I love that. And the slight tension that you feel right now, just uncertain what that's going to be. Yeah. Um, so if you had to be on a reality TV show, what one would you choose? Oh, right. Oh, that's a good question. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make up my own. Because I would want to interview people and I would want to do, it'd be like, um, kind of like an Oprah thing, but I want to give stuff away all the time. (laughs) And I want to ask people anything I want and like have conversations and like have all my friends together. So it would be like a talk show. Right. We'd be, there'd be lots of free things for everybody. Oh, I love it. And we'd laugh a lot and like they're right. a comedian or something. And like, I would do that. And it'd be fun. Yeah. It'd be so fun to hang right. out. What would you that, do? That would be so fun. Right? I would probably be on the show making it. So if um, Amy and Nick are the, the hosts of it, but you know, you get to, it's like crafting, but competitive. So it's like totally my jam. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's all about craftsmanship and how you meet these challenges and the parameters are really set. Um, So it's kind of fun because creativity for me sometimes is removing all the choices and then you can only work with these things, but here's the outcome. So probably making it. Yeah. What number are you on the Enneagram? Uh, Three, four, I think you're a seven, right? I'm a seven, yeah. So three, four yeah. is an achiever and a four is a feeler, right? I um, might have to look. It's not really, hold on. Uh, admirable, achiever, introspective, individualist. Mm, I feel it. Feel yeah, it. yeah. And yeah. you miss seven. Oh, it's fun. Let's <laughs> give things away. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Right. Yeah, I, I have been known to drop dinner midway through making it. It's not even done. It's not in the oven. I'm, it's like halfway done. And because um, I get a text, hey, Amanda, would you maybe want to, uh-huh, I want to. That sounds so fun. Bye, guys. Like Or like, babe, so-and-so wants to meet in, a, in an hour for dinner. Let's do it. Like, ah! right? They're like, yeah, totally. Like why I do things. And then because right. it sounds so fun. And then I don't really think about like the practicality of like actually what that might look like, but I know it's right. going to be fun, you know? Right. I get roped in on that too, because sometimes I'll like, cause we have three kids. And so I'm like, oh yeah, bring this person, this person. And before you know it, it's like a huge party. <laughs> and then afterwards, like, oh yeah, the cleanup or the emotional aftermath and my kids like falling down because they're so tired and you know total meltdown i'm like right right so one time when i first came to town um because i moved a lot you know like this is the 20th house we've ever lived in where we reside and mark has not moved that much because you know but i i came to town and i was like it was a mops group of like 50 ladies i was like let's just go ahead and do this like i could get to know everyone individually and i'm trying but let's just invite them all over. Yeah. 1200 square foot house <laughs> and an unfinished basement of the same footprint. And I just said, everyone's invited. Everyone. All y'all. I want right. everybody. And it was like 
perhaps the uh, high school parties you speak of, yes. but like people just hanging out in like my bedroom, you yes. know, like I, or I went down the hallway. I'm like, there's like people just hanging out in the hallway chatting. There were right. kids everywhere. Cause of course they brought all their kids. Right. It was like 5, so it was, children. Yeah. It was like 30 moms showed up. Yeah. And so that was probably like 45 to 50 children. Yeah. And it was crazy town. <laughs> my poor kids were like afterwards, like, <laughs> yeah. What just happened? <laughs> right? But it was so fun. And then it totally like breaks the ice. Be like, oh yeah, she's the one that had the 30 people over. Yeah. But you know what? I totally got to know people in that. And of course we did pottery while people were there too. Like come out to the garage, do a pottery lesson with of your kid real course. quick. Of course. Of course. There was food, okay. all the coffee. Baptized in the bathtub. I mean, right. Yeah. I bet you were doing it all. I just and love it. I couldn't even fully tell my husband that morning because he might have thought that was a little much. But he's like, <laughs> what'd you do? I was like, well, it turns out like 30 moms and like 45, 50 kids came over and it was a blast. It was totally fun. I mean, I had to take a nap later that day, but yeah, it was yeah. fun. That's, not, that's, the, that's what I do. I do things like that. Like everybody's welcome. And then, and then I'm like, oh, oh, I think I put pizza in the oven at some point. I should probably like, and then I've, you know, I'm notorious for like inviting people over and then I sit on the couch talking and then, and then like other people just like take the pizza out, cut it, get the drinks, get the plates. I'm like, Oh, sorry. Like, I swear I didn't intentionally have you come over to make us dinner. I just don't think about that. Right. And, like, and they get that right. They're like, Oh, it's fine. Right. We know Amanda, you weren't going to do any of this or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Because right. you have, you know, people over or whatever. I love right. it. So your other wife step today is have a crazy party. Yeah. Just invite a ton of people over. Yeah. Invite, you know what? I do think that's so cool though. Like, okay, that's like a challenge on Sundays. We try to find a family to do lunch with and we'll try to invite them over. Um, because A, I don't want our house to look nice when you come over. I want it to be like actual lived in because that's real at like reality. And then um, we're kind of a mess. So like invite them into your home like that. Don't have to put on this show for them. And just like we are going to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We have Jack's pizzas all the time in the freezer. We're making some Jack's pizzas. It's fine. And like the kids are going to play. What else do they need? Nothing. Um, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is totally fine. And then you actually get to whatever, have like real conversation that's not planned. I love spontaneity. Weird. I'm a seven. But um, right. that's such a good thing too to just like. Mix it up a bit. <laughs> it is. This is so good. I've missed you. Thank yeah. you. I miss you too. <laughs> so if you're in the area of Fergus Falls, hit Amanda up and go yeah. to a party at her house. Run over. Right. Um, but not right. after eight o'clock, you guys. Because I'm, okay. I'm really tired. Right. That's one different thing. It's one weird thing about me. I will have fun during daytime hours until like 7, okay. 8 p.m. Then the fun is done and I am tired and crabby and I need to go to bed. Hey, at least you know that about yourself, right? Right. Totally. Totally. Right. Anyway, unless there's a friend that puts music under your door or by outside your door, um, and then you open the door because there's a party going on outside the right. door via the music and you're like, what's going on? I got to see. And then you open the door and it's your friend Kelly playing music, right. making you think there's fun happening. So you Because I know you have FOMO even so bad. You, so even all I do is play music and you're like, what? Is there a party going on? Am I missing out on something? Who's hanging out? With comes out in a flash. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Don't be going to bed. Come on. I'm like, wait, are they still having fun without me? Right. Anyway, we were. No, it was really funny, and I have it on video too. I should like try to. <laughs> Please don't. My payment's <laughs> coming. Don't show that. <laughs> we were in our jammies. It's so fun. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, ladies, we love you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for listening. Um, did you know we like look at every comment? If you comment on yeah. um, YouTube or if you share this with a friend, we always notice. We love that. We love that you're sharing love and truth and hope. And so thank you for that. Um, again, as always, Kelly's always linked in the show notes as well. And what we talk about are in, is in the show notes. So take a look at that. Check out all the links as always. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And we love you. So thanks for being with us. And we will see you next week for an all new episode of the Wife Like Me podcast. Bye, everyone. Bye.